Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. Thank you so much for watching. In this video, I'm going to explain what a CV axle is. I'm also going to go over some applications that it's used for. And I'm also going to tear this CV axle down while naming all the parts and describing how those parts work. While I do that, I'll even go over some common points of failure with CV axles. So what is a CV axle? A CV axle, of course, is also known as a half shaft. And CV axles are responsible for delivering rotational torque out to the wheels. They're basically what makes the drive wheels spin. And CV, what that stands for is constant velocity. And it allows for smooth and consistent delivery of rotational torque out to the drive wheel. And there's no oscillation of rotational speed at any point in the CV axle. It's much different from like your universal joints that uh, are still used today, but used to be used uh, a lot on your older vehicles, you might have half shafts that have a universal joint on one end and another one on the other end. And what happens is that rotational torque comes out and the delivery mechanism to that universal joint may be spinning at one rate of speed, but the shaft on the other side, it'll be spinning at the same speed, but it's gonna oscillate in the speed in which it turns. So it'll speed up and slow down, speed up and slow down, speed up and slow down. And that can cause vibrations and things like that if your canceling angles aren't right on both ends of that half shaft. Now, CV axles, it's constant throughout. So you don't have any oscillation of rotational speed being delivered out to the drive wheel. The speed at which this part of the CV axle is rotating is gonna be the same as this part. And of course, the same as this part. It's the same throughout. So it allows for smooth transfer of rotational torque out to the wheels. Now, what are some applications that a half shaft or CV axle would be used in? Well, the vast majority, uh, actually most of your front wheel drive vehicles, they will have half shafts or CV axles on either side of the transaxle going out to the drive wheels. This has been a great design and been used for many, many years on front wheel drive vehicles and it has worked well and it will continue to work well for many, many decades to come in my estimation. CV axles or half shafts can also be used in uh, rear wheel drive applications where you have independent rear suspension. Of course, having independent rear suspension, one wheel is gonna be doing something different than the other wheel as you go over different types of terrain and different road surfaces. So, of course, you're gonna get a lot of uh, flexing and a lot, of, a lot of motion out of your CV axle while that's happening. So in order to deliver smooth and consistent rotational torque out to the wheels, the CV axle is the best design for applications like that. And of course, if you have all wheel drive vehicles that have four wheel independent suspension, of course, you're probably going to see CV axles on each of the four corners of that vehicle there. Now on your CV axle, you're going to have two constant velocity joints. You're going to have an inner constant velocity joint and an outer constant velocity joint. And the inner one is a special type of joint. Typically what you're going to see on an inner joint is a tripod type setup and you're going to have a tulip on this end and of course your tripod is going to be inside there and we'll get into that here in just a minute but the inner cv axle allows for plunging so the length of this cv axle realistically can can change and that will happen of course whenever your wheel on this side jounces and rebounds the distance between the transaxle or the rear differential and the drive wheel is gonna change, it's gonna increase and it's also gonna decrease. So you need to have a constant velocity joint on one end that can actually compensate for that increase and decrease in distance between the drive component and the driven component. Now on the outboard CV axle, you have your ball type constant velocity joint and it allows for a great deal of articulation right here. So you can say on a front wheel drive vehicle, whenever you steer your wheel, this thing can bend back and forth just like that, all while delivering that rotational torque out to the drive wheel there. It also allows for a little movement this way as well, or actually just as much. This right here is a pretty versatile joint and allows for a lot of movement while delivering torque. Okay, so let's take a closer look at these CV axles here. Uh, you can see that they're a little bit different one from the other. Uh, on this end here, the inner joint or the, or the tripod joint, um, you'll notice that they're different in the fact that uh, one is female and one is male. Well, this one right here actually goes or connects to what's called an intermediate shaft that actually goes into the transaxle. And 
This one sits quite far away from the transaxle, so in order to get the rotational torque delivered out to the CV axle, it uses an intermediate shaft, and just so happens that it's male, so it needs a female receptacle to go in that intermediate shaft. Now this one is more of your traditional type setup, and on this end here you have a male spline portion that actually goes into the final drive of the transaxle. And you'll notice on this end here, you have what's called a circlip, and the circlip actually contracts and expands. Whenever you go to put this into the transaxle, this will contract and go into the splines of the, the final drive. Then once it gets past a certain distance, this will expand and kind of lock the CV axle in place there. Now down here, and this, this has been sitting out in my scrap pile for quite some time, by the way, that's why it looks like this. But down here, this is where your output shaft uh, seal would sit and this is usually nice and smooth and shiny and a good surface for a seal to seal up against now Where the tripod joint is uh, You'll notice that you have these boots and these boots are responsible for sealing the grease inside the tripod portion of the CV axle there it also prevents moisture and dirt and such from getting into the CV axle and ruining the CV axle. So it kind of serves two purposes, keeps the grease in, keeps contaminants out, keeps the, th the joint nice and happy on the inside there. But the boot is actually a quite common point of failure for CV axles, it's actually probably the most common point of failure for CV axles. And they often go undetected. Uh, what happens is these boots get tears in them or they crack and then they start to sling grease out. And whenever that grease gets slung out, there's nothing in there to lubricate the thing. So it starts to fail on the inside. And the same thing goes for the outboard ball type CV axle joint on the outside of the CV axle here. This boot serves the same purpose. And this is also another very common point of failure as well. Of course, the metal part that's on the inside, the axle portion, uh, it's, you're hardly ever gonna see anything go wrong with those <laughs> unless you get in a wreck or something and, and like sever it or bend it. Uh, and that's kind of quite hard to do to tell you the truth. Now out here, you'll notice that there's some differences in these two CV axles as well. On this one, you have what's called a trigger wheel. And most vehicles nowadays are four wheel ABS type vehicles. And of course, at each wheel, you'll probably have an ABS wheel speed sensor. Well, the ABS wheel speed sensor sits about right here and it actually reads how fast this particular end of the CV axle is spinning. And that sends a signal to the ABS module letting the vehicle know how fast this wheel is spinning. And of course, this one does not have that, uh, but it probably has a wheel speed sensor set up some other way. I don't remember what that CV axle came out of, so I can't tell you to tell you the truth. But you'll notice on both of them, you have this male portion here, and both of them are splined. And those splines actually go into the wheel hub, which the wheel hub, of, of course, is connected to the wheel. And those splines allow it to grip and rotate that hub, thus rotating the wheel. And then on the end here, you have this this threaded portion and an axle nut would go on the end there fixing the axle to the hub all right let's go ahead and take this cv axle apart here we're going to go ahead and start with the inner joint first and we got a couple of clamps holding this boot on we'll need to remove those clamps and slide this boot back okay we're going to go ahead and slide this boot right off just like that and that actually came out a lot easier than i was anticipating um, this part of the CV axle right here, this is what's called the tulip. And of course your tripod goes inside of it and it can slide back and forth in those little channels right there. And of course this part is the tripod and in it you have these rollers. And this is what plunges in and out of the actual tulip there. Now, interesting point about this particular CV axle, I'm sure you see that this this part or this roller right here is a little bit more discolored than the others. And this CV axle actually had a problem where, of course, this boot was leaking and this tripod actually started to go out. But what was going on is at around 40 to 50 miles per hour under acceleration, there was a, a pretty tremendous vibration that was occurring. Uh, once you let off the gas, you stopped accelerating, the vibration would go away. You get back on the gas again and start vibrating again. Uh, the inner CV axle or the, the inner joint of the CV axle um, can commonly go out and it can present that type of symptom in your vehicle. And what that's caused by 
is excessive play between the tripod and the tulip. So instead of being a tight fit, you may have some slop or play between the tripod and the tulip. And that causes things to go out of balance whenever this is being rotated or, or spun under torque and it can cause an imbalance. And that's what causes that symptom there. Um, I've got another video where I go into this a little bit more in detail. I'll link it down in the description there. You're welcome to watch that guys. But on the end here, you have a snap ring. And wouldn't you know it, I didn't, I didn't prepare well enough for this video. I didn't bring my snap ring pliers with me over the weekend to make this video to take this tripod off. But through the power of video editing magic, I was able to clean this up and film this part of the video at a later date. And I did get that snap ring off. I had to destroy it to get it off, but it's a snap ring that you have to spread apart and then release it off of the end of the shaft there. Once that's done, then you can take your tripod off just like that. And you see where that snap ring sits right there. And that is your tripod. Now, once the tripod is off, of course, the inner boot can be slid right off just like so. Now down here on this end, you have your ball type joint and you can see that I've already cleaned it up and I popped it back just a little bit. You got to get in there with a drift and pop this out that way and it slides right off as well. Um, you see you have this circlip here. The circlip is what locks the shaft into the inner race portion of the ball type joint. This comes right off just like that and then of course, you can slide your boot off just like that. And that leaves you with just your shaft there. And then going into this ball type uh, joint here, uh, this can be dissected even further. Pop that out just like that. Once you get that down so far, you can then remove the balls inside there one at a time. And just FYI guys, I'm using the incorrect tool to disassemble the CV axle and I'm using it incorrectly. I'd suggest using a brass drift, but not in this manner. That joker was stuck in there. And there you go. Alright, so this is the inner race and this is the outer race and of course the little balls go between the inner race and the outer race and the way that this is built it allows for a ton of motion all while applying uh, consistent torque to the drive wheel there it's actually a really good design i think now of course this is a really common point of failure on cv axles as well uh, and it's usually due to a failed boot or a busted boot or maybe a boot clamp allowing grease to get out and dirt and debris to get in. Uh, you get a lot of wear and tear between the balls and the races, and it'll, it'll usually cause the CV axle to make a popping type noise whenever turning corners and accelerating. Uh, very, very common. Probably one of the most common symptoms of a CV axle going out is that, that stereotypical popping noise. And I got a video, actually I got several videos linked down in the description that go into uh, that noise, also the vibration that we discussed earlier. Um, you're more than welcome to watch those guys uh, and that will probably be a good help to you also. Now here's an exploded view of the CV axle here on the end here going to either the rear differential or the transaxle or intermediate shaft. You have your tulip and then the tulip uh, has within it the tripod which is connected to the actual axle set shaft there and of course your boot your inner um, cv axle boot is what seals that joint there and then out here you have your outer boot which seals all of this uh, this is your inner race this is your cage those are your balls right there and then this is your inner race of the outer joint or your outer housing and of course this all makes up a half shaft right here so folks i sincerely hope that this video was a help to you if you have any questions please comment down below i'll be happy to get back to you whenever i can and also guys if this was particularly helpful to you please consider subscribing to my channel or even becoming a member i'll have a link down in the description to channel memberships if you're interested in that uh, and what you'll get with channel memberships are priority replies to comments. Also guys, please read the entire description down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge. There may be some things I need to clarify and that's typically where I do that down in the description there. And also please read the entire disclaimer at the very end of it as well. 
Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good one.